All right, I think we should get started and folks who are late will catch on as they come on. <laughs> so welcome to all of you. This is our second of three cleanup coffee hours. Um, my name is Stacy Leonard. I'm the cleanup coordinator here at CRC. And I also run our event, uh, organize our public events. And I'm joined for this presentation by Angie Chafee. You wanna introduce yourself, Angie? Hey everyone, I'm the Communications Director at Connecticut River Conservancy. I am based here in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I'm so happy to see everyone from such a wide geography joining us. Great. And we also have Sarah Robertson um, in the mask in our office. You want to introduce yourself, Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah, Office and Events Assistant. I'll be in the background making things work. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thanks to everybody for being here. Um, yeah, some of us are still working from home. I, I'm hailing from Leverett, Massachusetts, not too far from our Greenfield office. So welcome. So before we get into the meat of the matter, just reminding folks that uh, this is being recorded and we'll share the link to the recording later uh, through an email, follow-up email that I'll be sending. And um, it will be on our CRC YouTube channel with all of our cleanup coffee hours. So if you missed the one in July, that's already there and you're welcome to check that out. Um, and also that we're planning on roughly half our time giving a bit of a presentation and half the time for Q&A. So anytime you have questions along the way, put them in the chat or uh, so we can come back to them later and, and you won't forget what you might've thought about once a new topic comes on. So um, yeah, the Q&A part is really helpful. We have a mix of uh, returning seasoned group leaders and folks who are new. So um, it's a great time for sharing everybody's experience. All right, so um, just a quickie uh, review of why we're here. Um, this is our 25th year. And while each of us have, have not been part of it for all those 25, um, Angie and I have a lot of experience to share from the years we have been here. And so do all of you. So. Our goal is to support your efforts in, in leading a group, to share lots of tips that we have and to hear from your experiences and, and share all the way around. Um, and as I said before, have ample time for Q&A. Um, today, our special deep dive is going to be around the topic of trash uh, collecting, disposing, recycling, and tallying, and uh, why all these things are important. So, I'll start with a quick little overview of, um, of the cleanup for those who weren't here last time. And then we'll dive into these, these topics about the trash. And as I said, Q&A. <laughs> um, so very briefly, um, we have traditionally run the cleanup on the last weekend of September. And we, we are planning to do that again and invite people to come out on that day. And, um, Nicely, the 25th of September coincides with our 25th year. So if you choose that date, um, you'll be right on target. But we also welcome people to come out any day that works for you and to plan a trip, a trip. <laughs> yes, it is a trip to plan a cleanup that works best for you and your group. Um, we have a slightly new registration process and we normally would have that live and ready to run for everybody, but we're having some delays with that because we have a new web development team. So that is imminently coming. So we really appreciate your patience um, and we'll be um, hopefully live by early next week. And it, it will be a, a fairly simplified, much simplified two-step process where you'll, um, everyone will register and sign a waiver and get all that paperwork done online. And then the second step as a group leader will be to select your site. And the second step as a volunteer is to look for a group to join. So there's details about that in our last um, coffee hour and also will be on our website. And finally, just that we plan to make it fun, uh, celebrate the sort of 20 five of things and um, have a few challenges and fun things along the way. So more of that will come with our web um, updates. So our first dive deep topic is going to be about trash tallies. So I'm gonna turn it over to Angie to get us started. 
Great. Thanks, Stacey. And I just want to note another fun thing that we are doing again this year is the River Witness uh, campaign, which we started last year. So you can share your photos and videos and artwork online on social media using the hashtag River Witness. That was really fun last year and we are excited to do it again. So tallying trash, why do we do it? It is one of the most important parts of the source to see cleanup and that's why we are starting here. It's important because you can't change or improve the problem until you measure the problem. So knowing exactly how much trash is being collected and found, what types of trash is being collected and found really gives us an idea of the scope of the problem so that we can better solve the problem of trash in our rivers. Um, this trash data is used in lots of different ways, uh, but some key ways are to help inform laws, legislation, and policies that can keep this trash out of our rivers in the first place, prevent it from even getting into the rivers. Um, this has been done for things like mattresses, tires, um, plastic bottles, and, and other types of beverage containers. Um, it helps us be able to know what are the most common types of trash that are being found and also what are the worst kinds of trash being found and then we can focus on those to find solutions to those problems. Most recently some of this trash data was used to help update the bottle bill in the state of Connecticut. The bill was expanded to include lots of different types of beverage containers and we were able to supply those decision makers with some of the data from our cleanups over the past two decades to give them an idea of exactly the scope of the problem. Um, and this year, uh, we are focusing some of our advocacy efforts on NIPS. Those are the tiny little um, liquor bottles that you may be familiar with. Uh, you see them littered about all over the place. And based on data that was submitted by group leaders and participants from the cleanup last year, uh, we know that of the um, thousands and thousands of beverage containers reported to us that were cleaned up, nearly a quarter of those were nip bottles. So even though they're a tiny little bottle, they are a big problem. So that's how some of this data can really help us solve the problem of trash in the rivers. Um, if you are interested in helping with this NIP campaign, when you register, you will get a welcome packet and there'll be some information in there. Um, and there'll be some postcards that you can send to your legislators to really encourage them to expand the bottle bills in Connecticut and Massachusetts specifically to include NIPs. Um, this data is used by CRC, obviously, but it's also, it becomes part of the global trash database uh, that's maintained by the Ocean Conservancy. We share this data with kind of the larger groups working on similar solutions. So we can try to find a, a larger regional and global solutions to our trash problems. And if you're interested in learning more about this advocacy that happens around trash all year long here at CRC, you can join us for some trash talk events that we have scheduled after the cleanup. Uh, I believe those will be happening in October and November, and those will be more of a deep dive on what are the specific problems and what are some potential solutions and how you can get involved in uh, helping us move towards those solutions. So uh, another key aspect of the trash tallies is when. We would like this data from you as soon as possible. So Stacy will in a minute go over some, a way that you can use a, an app. Uh, it's our first, uh, last year was our first year using the app. This will be our second year. And it's a great way to collect your data of what you're finding while you're finding it right out there in the field, in the moment. And you can submit that to us the day of, pretty much immediately. Um, and that's one of the best ways to get this data to us fast and easy. Um, if you don't have a smartphone or don't feel comfortable using the app or would prefer to use a paper form, you can absolutely still do that. Um, you can take the paper form with you into the field and kind of mark it up while you're collecting your trash and then take it home and enter it uh, via the online form. Um, we do ask that you do that within one week of your cleanup. Um, and if you're gonna be submitting data after your cleanup, using the form is the best way. If you're submitting the day of, we encourage you to use the app. If it's after the day of, the form is the way to go. And we ask you to get this information to us so quickly for a couple of reasons. We don't want you to forget what you found. 
but also it takes us a long time to compile all of this data from so many different groups. And so uh, we are trying to compile this as quickly as possible so we can report out to you and to all of the others about what we found this year. Uh, that will go into our printed Cleanup Chronicle newsletter. And we also try to have that data ready by January when the legislative sessions in the four different states, four different Connecticut River states uh, get started in January because there's always trash legislation happening and we wanna be ready with that data to help influence those decision makers to make a difference. Great, thanks Angie. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to do it and how to use the Clean Swell app and the paper tally um, that Angie mentioned. Um, but I wanna just briefly say that we're gonna have some incentives. So uh, one of our 25 year kickoffs is the first 25 groups that send in their trash tally will get a prize. So be one of the first and you will get a, a prize and I'm gonna keep a secret for right now. Um, so Clean Swell. Um, I actually can't see everybody. I was gonna say, raise your hand if you've used this before. Um, hopefully some have, and for some of you, it's probably new. This is a little bit of, a, of an intro to how it works. Um, there's a before, during, and after kind of stepping stone process for this. So clearly the, the, what you need to do before the cleanup is download the app, it's free, and you create an account, which is simply just your name and email. And an important feature is to um, include your, have your location services turned on and that will help geolocate you in the field. Um, I'm gonna actually introduce uh, a friend uh, and partner from the Ocean Conservancy, uh, another Sarah. This is Sarah Kolar who created a, a short video that shows you exactly how to use it with screenshots and, and such. And I think she, she says it so well, I didn't, I'm gonna have her do it herself. So here we go. Hello from Ocean Conservancy's Trash Free Seas program. Can this you hear? This video will show you the basics of how to use our cleanup data collection mobile app, CleanSwell. CleanSwell is a tool designed for you to do a cleanup anywhere at any time. Please download the app in advance before you get cleaning and let's dive in. When you open the app for the first time, you'll need to create an account once and you'll remain logged in. Please allow location services to be turned on while using this app to optimize the functionality. This also allows the app to track the distance you cover during each of your cleanups. Note that not every volunteer in your group needs to have the app open. It's a good idea to designate one data recorder and they can follow along, listen to their teammates call out trash and keep the data tally for everyone. Depending on the device that you download the app onto, the navigation bar and buttons may be in different places, but they all function in the same way. I'll show a demonstration of how the app works now and we'll cover key features such as the group name field. Let's go. Here's how you can record your data during a cleanup. Click on start collecting. Provide basic information about your cleanup. Group name is important. This is how you can tag your individual cleanup effort to a larger group. Group name is not case sensitive, but try your best to get the spelling correct. This is the collection screen. As a data recorder, it's best to let your teammates handle the trash and wear gloves. You can follow along using the app without gloves and tap on the icons as you hear them called out by your teammates. For example, two food wrappers, one plastic bag, three straws, you'll see that each trash category is being tallied in the top right corner. To record high quantities of a particular item collected, such as plastic or foam pieces, hold down on that icon with your fingertip for a couple of seconds and this window will appear. This is where you can add any amount to your running tally. You'll see the tally updates in the top right corner of that icon. Any items that don't have a specific category can be logged in the bottom right category of other trash. If you accidentally clicked on an item and you need to subtract it from your tally, go to the bottom and tap on the toggle to remove an item. The icon color will change and you can tap on that icon to subtract from your total tally. When your cleanup is finished, scroll to the bottom, click on done collecting. Review your cleanup on the screen here. 
The weight is calculated using predetermined weights for each individual item on the collection screen. You can adjust this if it does not seem accurate. The comments field is to note anything you'd like about your cleanup, from strange or interesting finds, to items of local concern, to any wildlife that you may have found entangled in debris. Again, there's one more chance to adjust any of the initial information that you provided, including that group name. And when you feel set, click Submit My Data. When you see this thank you screen, you'll know that your data have successfully submitted. You'll also receive a summary to the email associated with your account. You can share your successes or any badges that you may have earned via social media, or you can head to your history your individual and team cleanup effort is tracked over time under My Cleanup History, and you can also see any badges that you've earned. If collecting trash data while you clean is not a great option for you at this time, you can always do a cleanup and come back to the app to record a past cleanup. You'll see a lot of the same initial information, including that group name, if you have location services turned on for the app, it will ask if your cleanup took place where you are currently located. If not, you can always type in this field where your cleanup actually took place. Once you have cleanup location set, scroll down and instead of asking for item by item data, this portion of the app simply asks for how many bags of trash you collected in total. You can indicate the size of bag and how many of each of those sizes you collected. Again, if you accidentally tapped an icon and you need to remove from your tally, the toggle is below the icons. If you are uncertain about the total volume of trash collected, you can see weight estimates below each icon. Or if you do happen to know the total weight of trash collected, you can indicate that in the text field below. Once you feel set with your cleanup information, click Submit My Data. Again, you'll see a thank you screen and you'll receive a summary email to the email address associated with your CleanSwell account. Thank you for trying out CleanSwell. Remember to stay safe during all of your cleanup events and feel free to reach out to our team at cleanup at oceanconservancy.org if you have any questions. Oops, didn't mean to cut her off. Um, oops, sorry, don't want to go that fast. Um, so I think that was a great summary and really helps um, walk you through what happens when you when you are looking at the app because it can be a little bit confusing. And I just wanted to underscore um, a couple of a couple of items. One is about a uh, group name. When you turn on your clean swell app and you're in the Connecticut River watershed, uh, it will automatically pre populate your group name to say CRC in the in the front it, CRC. Uh, what you can do is then keep CRC and put a dash and then add your own group name. And that way you'll be counted in the CRC count and be identified as your own group. And um, if you forget to do that, it's not critical because you are located with the geolocator. So we'll know you're in the watershed, but it does help us sort through um, all the groups more easily at the end. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing about Clean Swell is that it's in real time. So um, as Angie mentioned before, uh, this is a great way to get your data to us really fast. And um, once you're, you're done, you're done. You don't have to go back and do more. Um, there, I wanted to clarify um, what she was talking about, a record a past uh, cleanup as compared to what Angie mentioned about using the paper form. And you really can, you have the options, but when you record a past cleanup with clean swell, as you noticed, you can't itemize. Um, you can only itemize if, you're, if you hit collect data and you do the itemized one. And then that, but that's gonna count your geolocator wherever you are physically in the moment. So uh, you can't adjust that when you get back later. Um, you can always call us and we can adjust it if needed, but I just wanted to clarify on that. Um, and I, um, the last thing about clean swell also, which I sort of forgot about until I watched the video a couple of times, um, that there is a history. So if you're cleaning up over time, over, over the years, you also can have your own tally yourself and 
that's a nice record of your group's uh, work over time. Um, I wanted to also just say a word about using the paper tallies though, because it, it certainly is a preference for a lot of folks uh, to not have to worry about an app and having a phone in the field. Um, and you're welcome to use the paper tallies. Um, the paper tally will have the same information on it as Clean Swell for the most part. We have a couple of what we call items of local concern um, that are itemized on our paper form, which are not itemized on the app. And that is because the app is covering the whole world. So the Ocean Conservancy has made this app and kind of found the common denominator with uh, cleanups that exist in many different countries. And many of them are ocean-based and have different, they're just getting different um, items than we find in our rivers. So um, the paper one does come in handy. And if you wanna use it, we just ask you that when you get back home after tallying by paper, that you input your content using an online form. And we have all of this on our website and you'll get all of these links in the confirmation email that comes to you after you register. So, and it, everything will be on, online. So um, it, it helps us if you, the priority one to do it online. So we're not trying to, um, decipher different people's handwriting. That's really what's difficult about the paper ones. And it takes a lot longer for us to, to collate, you know, a hundred different forms um, when each person could do their own. So if, if you can do that, we'd really appreciate that. Um, so uh, you probably have questions about that. So hold on to those, but um, I think we're gonna move on. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah, we're gonna move on to trash disposal and how to deal with the stuff you get. So I'm gonna turn it back to Angie. So there, we just wanted to share a couple of options, optional options uh, for you to consider uh, to go green with your cleanup and to help reduce the climate impact of your cleanup. Um, the key way to do that is to consider using reusable uh, items like reusable gloves, either gloves that you've used for something else already and you're reusing them for the cleanup or buy reusable gloves that you can use again after your cleanup is done. If you're looking to cut out some plastic from your cleanup, you can consider using um, reusable buckets rather than garbage bags uh, or repurposing bags. Uh, things like bird seed bags or other animal feeds wood pellet bags, or um, if you have a brewery local to you, their hops bags or grain bags are often very heavy duty and they're happy to share them to be reused and repurposed in this way. Uh, they're a great, a great tool to, to use during your cleanup, uh, can hold lots of heavy duty trash. Um, and then we also encourage you to recycle as much as possible the trash that you pick up. Um, and there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Two easy ways. One is to carry two different trash bags or buckets with you. So consider using a clear bag for your recyclables and a black or another colored bag for your trash items. Um, and that way you're separating things right as you go. Or if separating as you go is a little bit cumbersome, you can consider doing a big sort at the end. So you come back after you've picked up your trash, dump everything out, pull out the recyclables, and then dispose of your waste. And that's another perfect time to be counting the trash that you've uh, picked up and be entering it either into the app or on your, your tally form. Uh, to help reduce the climate impact of your cleanup, consider the transportation, how you're getting there um, and how your volunteers are getting there. Uh, key, a key aspect of this is to find a cleanup that's near you so you're not traveling very far and consider walking, biking or using public transportation to get there or you could consider carpooling with your friends or family. Um, and we will have uh, more tips for going green and being climate friendly on our website um, that you can find as you're planning your cleanup. Um, what's next, Stacey? Arranging for disposal. This is what a lot of people have questions about. So the first option that you should consider when figuring out what to do with the trash that you've collected is to reach out to your city or town. Um, a lot of times these towns are so happy to have the help to clean up the community that they are very happy to help you in disposing of that trash. You could consider reaching out to your local transfer station, Department of Public Works, or your Parks and Rec Department. 
A lot of times they are, they have staff available that could come pick up the trash either on the day of your cleanup or the following Monday. Um, or they may be willing to waive fees when you bring that trash, drop it off at the transfer station. So first line of support is to contact your town and see what they're willing to do. We have found that towns all across the four states are very happy to help out. Yeah, I think I'll just chime in that um, I worked with a group of folks in my town in Leverett, Mass. Uh, this spring, we organized an Earth Day cleanup and we contacted our transfer station and they were all over it. Please bring in the trash all for free and we'll bring our um, highway department will come pick up anything that you find that is too heavy to bring or that people can't bring, leave it on the side of the road and we'll pick it up Monday morning. So we're in essence, as volunteers, we're, we're really helping the town get, get the work done that they don't may not have staff to do. So it's a win-win all around. So I, I wouldn't be shy about contacting your, your local folks. Um, we also have on our website, a list of towns and some of the bigger cities that have been repeat helpers all through the years. So if your town or city is on that list, uh, you can be pretty assured that they're already, they're already there to help. Um, but be sure that you're mentioning I'm um, with the cleanup, um, with the source to sea cleanup when you call and Connecticut River Conservancy. Um, and um, I wanna also mention another option for some of our big sites. Um, so if you're going to a big park or you, um, you go to a place where you know there are a bunch of groups uh, fan out across a wide terrain, we often have the ability to have dumpsters um, brought to those locations. And thanks to one of our lead sponsors is USA Waste and Recycling. And I see John Locke is here as one of the group leaders for one of those groups. Um, we're really grateful to have them. They have offered uh, dumpster support. Uh, they'll bring a dumpster to a site uh, if it's warranted to be have you know, a large amount of trash that couldn't otherwise be just put in somebody's car to be taken away. So if you need support or think that you're a site that is large enough to warrant a dumpster, uh, the first thing is to go on our website and look in that section about dis trash disposal and you'll see a list of dumpsters that are already committed. And then if you don't see yours there, um, the staff person at USA is April Regan and her contact info is there. And you can also contact me and I can help support anybody who needs help. Um, so next, um, we're going to talk a little bit about hazardous materials. So the main thing to think about with hazardous materials is safety first. We want you to stay safe during this cleanup, and we do not want you to put yourself at risk. So if you see anything during your cleanup that has a warning label or a warning symbol on it, or if it's leaking, it just looks weird and scary, leave it alone. You do not need to pick up something that concerns you. Um, and you can report that to us. Uh, we do have a hazardous material form, I believe, that you can fill out, or you can also contact your state directly. And we have contact information for each of the four states on our website where you can report hazardous materials um, or an emergency spill. Um, needles are a type of hazardous waste that we've been hearing from a lot of groups, unfortunately, being found more and more frequently. Um, and again, if you are not comfortable picking up needles, don't. You can certainly call your local police department and they will gladly come out and handle that for you. If you are comfortable dealing with this, make sure that you're taking proper safety precautions. Wear gloves and make sure that you are putting the, sh the needles into a proper sharps container. That can be a container that you get from your health department that is specifically for needles or you can also use any sort of other rigid, hard plastic container with a really secure lid. Um, that could be like a coffee container or a, a laundry detergent bottle. Um, and when you're done, you can duct tape the top so that it uh, is sure to stay sealed. And then do not put that in your regular trash. It has to stay separate. Um, you can take that container to your police department, fire department, or health department, and they will dispose of it for you or you can visit uh, the website safeneedledisposal.org and you can search by your zip code to find drop-off locations near you. I'll put that website in the chat here. 
Great, and we'll have a lot of these links on our website too. So um, don't feel like you have to scramble to write everything down. Um, in addition to finding lots of needles and other things, we're more and more finding a lot of homeless camps. And um, we just wanted to speak a little bit to this issue. Um, in some of our bigger cities and towns, we've been uh, connecting with different local organizations that work with the homeless and trying to collaborate on ways to, to help deal with some of the trash that's um, created by living in the street or near a river. So um, in, in those cases, we're trying to help get, um, get support, um, obviously to the people themselves, but also for dealing with the trash. So what, this, this goes back to an important piece of being a group leader that we mentioned last time is uh, scouting your site before you go out there so you know what to expect. And so um, when you go out and you, you come upon a homeless encampment, um, you wanna approach kindly. And um, if people are, are physically there, um, introduce yourself and let them know that you're coming out on such and such a date and you want to help with removing any trash that they need help removing. Um, in our experience, people have been very grateful to have the help. And um, some of our groups have offered um, to even leave some bags there if they want to help do some of the cleanup um, or does help them designate an area where volunteers will know that this is trash versus stuff that's still in use. So that's one way to uh, connect with people as you go out in the field. Um, you may come across a camp that um, you're not sure if it's active or not. Our very first priority is absolutely do not dismantle any active camps, um, even if no one is around. Um, and it's gonna be a bit of a judgment call on your part as to whether it's, it is active or not. So if at all in question, leave it be. Um, if it looks like it's just debris that's been washed ashore or whatnot, then that would be safe to pick up and remove. Um, and then um, if you have any doubts, uh, I would calling your local authorities would be the next best uh, step to take. Um, and certainly get in touch with us at CRC if you have any questions about any of that. Um, the last little section on specific types of trash that people seem to find a lot in our watershed, unfortunately, are tires. and. Um, we have a collaboration or we, we hook into a program that is run by the Bridgestone Tire Company called Tires Forward. And they, um, they do a recycling and repurposing program um, where they will take big batches of tires to be hauled and haul them away. Um, the way that works though, is you have to have a minimum of about 50 tires or more in order to be able to engage with them because they'll come out with a big semi trailer and um, they won't do it for just a few. So this is another uh, underscoring the importance of scouting your site before you go. So you know, are you going to encounter a ton of tires? Are you encountering one or two? Um, but even if you, um, if you just encounter a few, it's good to know you can call your local Bridgestone store and tell them that you're part of the cleanup and ask if they will either waive or reduce the fee that it is to um, dispose of tires. And as well, when you're making those calls to your local town and DPW or transfer station, asking them about collecting, what's their process on collecting tires and whether they would, they would be able to take wait, uh, absorb the fee for, for you. So you have a couple of options there, your, your own town, the Bridgestone store, um, and if, if you, get in, if you get stuck, um, please contact us and we'll help you either organize with Bridgestone or maybe uh, we, we will know of other groups that may have found other tire locations that we could bundle together. So that is the story on tires. Um, so I wanted to, uh, we're, we're almost done with our presentation part and wanna leave time for lots of questions and answers. I just wanna make sure you are aware of all the, um, the people that you can connect with back at CRC. Um, mine and Angie's contacts are here. And our three river stewards, if you're not familiar, we do have a river steward in each region and they are the best point of contact for very site specific questions. Um, if you're not sure within your region where to go, 
after looking at our resources online, we have maps and whatnot, um, they would be your, your contacts. Um, I am sort of the, the, the funnel of all the cleanup um, in my role as cleanup coordinator. So if you have any questions, probably the first step is to contact me and I can help direct you. So um, we're gonna move into our advice and Q&A time. So I'm gonna stop sharing and see if we can see everybody who's here. Uh, open up the chat which I haven't been able to see while you're during the presentation and um, see if we can start tackling some questions. Good to see everybody. Uh, let's go in gallery view. Okay. So um, I don't know if Angie were able to see any questions coming up first. So we had one question come in uh, wondering if you can still use the Clean Swell app, even if you go out on a different date or weekend and that's, you certainly can. Um, you can use the Clean Swill app anytime that you go out to clean. And that's kind of what makes the Clean Swill really useful because if you go, especially if you go later, your, your info is coming in in real time. And so we'll, we'll get it right away. And that saves a lot of time on the tally process. Um, does anybody have want to speak? Oh, Michael, I was going to. I was going to say, anybody like Michael want to talk about um, how they deal with, I, I want to let you ask your question, but I want to ask you also at some point if you can share as uh, someone who, Michael is like the lead uh, trash organizer at the Green River cleanup in Massachusetts, Greenfield, Mass. And if you would share some of your techniques for tallying and or uh, do's and don'ts that you found along the way. But please feel free to ask your question if that's more to the point right now. Oh, well, um, okay, let me start about what it's like in Greenfield. Um, as you know, we have you know, maybe a couple hundred volunteers going out and they're bringing all the debris to one spot. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're seeing like 15 tons, 20 tons coming in at a time. And so, um, that's, a, that's good because, you know, we are able to have some efficiency by dealing with that amount of trash at one time. Luckily, the DPW uh, is a real good partner with us. And they just ask us to do a few things like they want, there's some separations that they want done. And this changes from year to year, depending upon opportunities to recycle materials or to reuse materials. So for instance, uh, in previous years, they've had us you know, put trash piles together, but to pull out wood waste, to pull out metal, to pull out electronics, of course, hazardous waste. And for a number of years, they had us pulling out rigid plastics. Rigid plastics are, would be like swimming pools or, you know, it's mostly toys and those kinds of things. So they like it separated. And uh, that really helps, helps them out quite a bit because, um, you know, they're required by law to separate those materials out to make sure they're not ended up in the transfer station, either in a, a waste and energy facility or in a landfill. So, uh, and, you know, we also uh, appreciate them asking us to do that too, because then we're diverting a lot of the material for recycling. And, and as you know, that is something that we're all interested in doing. We're, we're able to do two things. We're able to not only clean up you know, uh, the river banks and, you know, some of the other areas in town, but we're also able to move materials for reuse and recycling. So there's a double reward there. It seems like one of the hardest things that we recycle in bottle and cans. And uh, what happens is a lot of the bottle and cans are out in the environment and they're in, in dirt and they're impacted and they're filthy. And a lot of the redemption centers don't like that, those materials coming in because the redemption centers, they need to separate that and those materials out even further, like the color glass or even um, you know the the brand of the um, of the of the product that is in that container, so they don't like to have to handle a lot of, a lot of dirty stuff. So we spend a, a good amount of time you know trying to wash out those materials to make sure that we can deliver it to a, a redemption center. So then the tally is is quite interesting because a lot of times we have a big huge pile. I mean we have a big pile, and so I got to count it off and I got to put my math skills together and. Uh, and then, you know, try to determine how much it, it weighs. 
And I used my, what we call best professional judgment uh, to do that. And uh, we didn't submit it. And, you know, we are one of the biggest contributors to, to the event uh, on the Connecticut River. And we're proud of that. And uh, so, you know, we take our trash pile and our debris pile and our recycling pretty serious. And we, we do a good job. Uh, and uh, Stacy and Angie have a lot to do with that. So, thanks, Michael. Yeah. Hopefully, that helps. If well, actually, are any of you here with a fairly large group of your own, or I would say large would be you know fifty or more people come out. No. How about twenty ish? Twenty or more. You raise your hand. So um, that method of bringing, and Angie mentioned this before too, of everyone, if you're fanning out in smaller little groups, then everyone bringing their trash to one spot and, um, and doing the tally there is, is, very, is a good method. Um, or if you're in your little groups, you have each mini group doing their own tally and then you don't have to go through the pouring it all out. It just depends on, uh, mostly depends on your site and where you are. Um, uh, so hope that hope that helps. Well, we had a question, question come in the chat. Sorry, go ahead, Michael. Yeah. Well, so my question was, um, you know, the grain bags and the plastic bags. Some sometimes those things weigh more than the clean swell because clean swell. I mean, they have how much a cigarette butt weighs? A cigarette butt weighs 0 0.001 pound. So, you know, that's not really all that much. And, you know, so one of the bags might weigh more than that. So why wouldn't bags be included in the tally for, for, for you know, if we're you looking for volume and weight conversions of the debris? Well, with the app, I know they're trying to just do an average of, you know, there's so many different kinds of bags that people use. There's thick, heavy duty bags, there's lightweight bags. So it's, it's a bit of an average. So you know, that's, that's the best they can do with their automated weight system. But they did say that you can adjust the weight at the end um, manually uh, if, if you have something that's extra heavy um, that doesn't so, seem to match. So you think they account for that in these, in these estimates for these individual things like food wrappers and plastic yeah, I think, cups? And... I think they're taking the best average. I see. Yeah. And it, yeah, I'm, Stacey may have said this, it's more about counting the weight of the trash itself rather than the collection device. And so we think it's a benefit to reuse a bag, even if it is a heavier duty um, bag, because you're giving it another life, basically. I see. Right. And I'll just let, let Tracy, you're going to tell people about, you know, the, you know, the follow up party. <laughs> you, know, you have me working on that a, a bit too. So you know, I want to make <laughs> well, sure you mention, I don't um, know if these folks are going to be invited or not, but it's everyone's invited to everyone. wherever they can go, though people here are from all over the watershed. So this is not a greenfield based um, conversation. Right. We have people right. from Connecticut and New Hampshire and Vermont. Um, so, but maybe that's a plug to say if you're a, a group leader, you can also organize your own uh, after party, as we call it. And bring out some food and drink and maybe some music and celebrate your volunteers together and all your hard work. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And if you are near the Greenfield Mass area, you're welcome to the Green River Cleanup, uh, now called the four, uh, sorry, the Franklin County Rivers Cleanup to be more inclusive of all the people in the region. There, we have um, two other big sites that I'll mention that do do, will be doing some kind of, hopefully, well, this is all with the caveat that we're all still going out and things are, we're able to do things in large groups. So I, we should have probably said that at the start that um, we're out following state guidelines. And if anything changes in terms of our ability to be out in big groups, then we'll have to ad adapt ourselves to that as we did last year. Um, but there is a new group in Essex, Connecticut that's forming and they're planning to have um, a cleanup on the first weekend in October. And there's a group um, in Amherst, Mass, the Four Rivers cleanup that's going to be doing, that's usually a pretty large group. And I think they'll be in Groff Park. So if you're in any of those neighborhoods, um, you're welcome to join. So um, let's try and get over to some other questions. Yeah, we've had a couple come through into the chat that um, there's two that are kind of related. 
Um, Carol Ali was wondering if we ever have Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts involved in the cleanup. And every year we do. We have multiple groups of girls and Boy Scouts um, that join us. And that's a really great activity uh, to get youth involved in making a difference in their community and teaching them about the impact of trash, how to help keep their environment clean, and hopefully create uh, environmental stewards for the rest of their lives. It's a great habit to begin early on. Um, and so if you know of uh, scout groups, we encourage you to uh, recommend the cleanup as an activity for them. And Britta is wondering if we have any tips for working with groups of young children. Um, they're hoping to have a weekend or family grouping with adults uh, to help. Um, nice. We do have um, on our website, we will have some child safety guidelines to consider um, when you're working with, with kids, like how many adults to kids ratio you may wanna consider um, a big one. Uh, a big factor is to scout the site before you go to make sure that it is appropriate for children. Um, you wanna be careful of really steep banks. Uh, that can be hard for children to navigate um, or other, other hazards, you know, poison ivy, things like that to look out for. Stacey, do you have other advice? Um, yeah, I just wanted to go one step back on the Boy Scout, Girl Scout, Cub Scout thing. Uh, I don't know if Carola was looking for a particular group, um, but you can always contact me after because we have lists of some of the groups that have participated in the past. And because our registration is not currently live, I don't know who's coming back. But if you were, I don't know, if, did you want to, did we answer your question? Or was there something more um, specific you wanted to tackle in that question? You answered it. Fine. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. I'll pass along the information. Okay, wonderful. Um, and um, Brit, Brita, Brita, Brita. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Are you a new leader or returning uh, leader with the cleanup? Unofficially. Unofficially, uh, we've done it every year, but just, just with the family. And I'm working hard on an, two, two different groups. We'll see. Great, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I guess I would echo the things that Angie said about um, really making sure you have a site that can accommodate young people. And one way that we can help you with that, uh, when you go to our website and look at, if, if you're looking to find a site, uh, we have an adopt a site map. And there is a, an area on that where it lists, is this site suitable for children? And that will say yes or no. And I want to also share that all, the, all of that information comes from volunteers like you all who go out and may see um, some trash and report it to us. So you, it's still really, really, really important to go and scout those sites because the sites, the situation uh, changes all the time given water levels and rain and, and time. So um, you can use that as a gauge, but then go and check it for yourself. And we do have, a, we will have a, a whole page on, on child safety tips. I'm not sure of anything else that comes to mind offhand that Angie didn't mention. If you have any other specific. Uh, that's, a, that's a great start. And I'll, um, I'm trying to do this under the umbrella of the school and the school is like, oh, I don't know, see, get there. Right. If not, I'll just drag my family out and make them pick up trash. They love it. Well, the, um, another, a, the nice thing, another, too, oh, sorry, just to that point about the school, um, I mean, obviously, the schools are going to do what they feel comfortable, but it is an outdoor event. It's a great event to be able to spread out with. Um, we can still accommodate by wearing masks and everybody wears gloves. Um, so uh, it's, it's a pretty, it kind of checks all the boxes of, um, of being a doable event during this time totally. under those considerations. I tried so hard last fall. Anyway, um, on a slightly different note, uh, Envirothon uh, National is doing net zero waste and, and waste management basically this year. Um, so Massachusetts will be looking at net zero solutions for towns for high school teams. Um, mm. And I would assume that Vermont and Connecticut will also be looking at that. I'd be happy if you want to send me some stuff, I will send them on to those state coordinators and I'd love to get it to my Valley teams. Um, I have a lot of teams who aren't in the Connecticut River watershed though. Can I, if there's like a 
section that I can send on about like clean clean swell or something to other teams Definitely. who might be interested in organizing a cleanup, even if it's not CRC. If you if if that's highlightable, I'd be happy to spread. That yeah, absolutely. Our, that's a year. That's a wealth of information. Thank you. Um, we we have been thinking about how can we better reach out to youth and youth youth groups. You know, mm -hmm. from Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts to schools and beyond, um, families as well. Um, and the Envirothon is something that I, I've known has occurred in different times. And sometimes groups have connected with us on it and sometimes not. I feel like we've sort of lost a little bit of a connection with those groups. So I'd be happy to follow up with you after Great. this and connect. Look Thanks. And the resources that are on our website um, are useful for doing our river cleanup anywhere. Um, so certainly, um, even if they're outside of the watershed, um, the information can still be useful to others and we'd be happy for folks to take a look at that and, and learn from what we've put out there. Yeah, and also to the point of, um, a little back, back to the point about schools being wary, um, one of the things that folks can do or think about if you go end up going in just with your family, for example, is not to feel like you have to be on a river or stream um, trash that you pull out of a, a city or town, you know, sidewalk is trash that's removed from the waste stream going into a, a storm sewer and flowing into the river at some point. So we're happy for trash to be picked up anywhere and everywhere and not just, you know, in the vicinity of water bodies. So does anybody else have a question who hasn't had a chance? Or does anybody want to share um, an experience that they had in a past cleanup as related to um, this, this topic of uh, sorting trash, recycling, uh, tallying? Have you used our tally materials before? We'd love to hear your thoughts on using clean swell or the paper tally. Michael? You know, well, the tires are a little bit tricky because, you know, you have the, you know, they want to know when the date of the, t the tire, when the tire was manufactured, because um, they have it grouped into categories because they're claiming that, oh, there are no more old tires out there, you know, but that's just not true. There's plenty of old tires still in the woods. So when you, if you have tires, um, it's important to uh, kind of note the date on the tires. And I think there's a font for that, Tracy, right? Oh, for those tires? Uh, well, Funny you should mention it. Um, we, we had been doing this tire, what we call tire dating process, and we were finding that it was very cumbersome for folks to do. So we are actually discontinuing that for the moment or um, because the data, um, I think the main purpose of doing it was trying to, to uh, underscore to the manufacturers and other stakeholders that um, illegal dumping is still occurring. And by checking out on uh, the data, the tires, we were able to show that um, there's still new tires being dumped as well as old tires being dumped. And we didn't have a big enough sample to really make a huge impact in that regard. So um, we're not asking people to take on that part of it, okay. but just collecting and getting them out of the, out of the woods and rivers is the most important, but thanks for bringing that up. During our tire advocacy, we've actually, um, that argument hasn't been brought up as much recently that um, the manufacturers, like you said, Michael, used to say dumping isn't happening anymore. Well, they've given up that argument now. Oh, good. Uh, I just want to give people a tip on where to find sites. Um, so you probably you wondered, well, how do I go look? I mean, where, where, where should I look? Well, you know, of course, you can probably see it anyway, just right along the side of the road for just like people throwing stuff out out a window, like that's what happens with nip bottles or stuff blowing out the back of a pickup truck. But there's also some there's also some illegal dumping places where people will go to, to do that. Now, so the thing to look for is if you're in a kind of a, a rural area and you see pull offs, you know, things where can, people can pull off on the side of the road, either to rest, like chuck their cell phone or, you know, for whatever reason, there's a pull off. And sometimes they pull off the town is created or sometimes mm -hmm. it's those are the places where, you know, to, to really start to look for some, for some dumping and some litter. 
That's and they're, they're all over the place. So uh, that's just a tip, one way you might, where you might look if you are the one out scouting places. Excellent, thanks, Michael. Um, I wanted to, we are coming towards the end of the hour, but I wanted to also make sure people knew that our, we're having one more of these coffee hours. It's gonna be just sort of not wide open for any questions and topics that you wanna raise. And that's on September 9th, I believe. And that's at five o'clock. So we're, we've been experimenting with midday, late day and after work hours. So I'm hoping that we find a way to uh, reach a lot of different people. So please come on out for that one too. And if you have any particular topics that you wanna discuss, you can share here now, you can throw it in the chat um, or as, contact us uh, after this. Bye, Rita. Thank you for coming. I know you have to go. And Stacy, I'm willing to give people technical assistance in any way if they need it. You know, if they have questions or if they find something or they want to put another pair of eyes on something and they don't know who to call or look for, that um, if they contact you, go through you, I'd be more happy to get down and take a look at it and help folks. That's a great offer. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks so much, Michael. That's awesome. This this may be on your website, but um, do you do you work with conservation commissions? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we work with anybody and everybody who wants to clean up and sometimes they come to us and sometimes we go to them, but um, we have a lot as a, a very large organization that has our fingers in a lot of different parts of river work. Uh, we're already in collaboration with a lot of those groups. So we do um, reach out to them um, and collaborate together. Did you have a, a particular no, I just know that many towns do have um, cleanup days. Right. And a lot of people do them in the spring, we've noticed. Um, so uh, by sort of dove dovetailing the end of the year, end of the season, we hope that we're, we're catching a lot of the trash. Um, and you said you were from Lyme, New Hampshire. Great. Okay. Is that um, near Claremont? Somewhat, yeah. Okay, because I, I know the Claremont I'm Conservation is, is yeah. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions or we'll wrap it up as we've gotten to the five o'clock hour? Good. So, well, really appreciate all of you coming out and sharing the, time, the hour with us and hope you've picked up some tips um, as I said, I'll be sending a follow-up email with uh, lots of links and all the access to the, the pages that we've been talking about. And we hope we'll see you at the next coffee hour or at a cleanup. Um, feel free to ask questions, email us, call us. Um, we're here for you. We want to help make your cleanup successful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Keep an eye on your email inbox and on CRC social media in the next uh, week or so. We will be announcing that registration is open. Yay. Thanks. All right, Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.